look, isn't that beautiful? I know it's a pecan slab pie. <laughs> I've been making this for years because if I take a pie somewhere, it only serves six to eight people and usually it's a large gathering and everybody's wanting to get to that pecan pie and it runs out and I feel bad. So once I started seeing these hitting the screen, I said, I've got to make it. And I've been making it for years. So if you want to stay with me, we'll make it together. I am about to cube a whole cup of cold, cold butter because we're going to make a sweet treat today for our nephew. He is always here to take care of our puppy dogs while we're gone. And I'm cubing a cup of butter or two sticks or what, eight ounces or 16 tablespoons, <laughs> right? I know. Anyway, it's got to be good and cold to cut into our pastry, okay? We're going to make a homemade pie for us because I want Josh to see how much I love and appreciate him that we can count on him to take care of our fur babies inside the house and he comes and watches TV with them. He just takes real good care of them when we were on vacation and he always does. And I asked him when I came back, I said, Josh, I want to make you something special. What do you like? And without a hesitation he said pecan pie so pecan pie it is and I don't know about y'all but I bet it's the same when you take pecan pie to a gathering family gathering church gathering wherever meeting it's only got six or eight pieces in it right and I have seen people squabble over a piece of pecan pie because <laughs> there's not another one out there and they're all wanting a piece of it so what I did, started doing several years ago, is I will make a sheet pan pecan pie. That way there's plenty, plenty for everyone. And that's what I want to do for Joshua. Um, just because I want to go over the top and show him my love and my appreciation for what he does for us. So I've got our cup of butter cubed, okay guys? And I'm just going to sit this to the side real quick, like, because we have got to continue on while that butter's cold. We're going to measure out two and one half cups of all-purpose flour. Um, and I, that butter that I used also is unsalted. And if you're going to use salted, well, you're not going to be sure exactly how salty your crust is, so I hope you can use unsalted. But if you can't, I would probably omit the salt out of our recipe because we are going to add salt here. Okay, y'all help me count because y'all know how I am. I get to talking to y'all and I can't, I don't keep up. That's two, right? And then one half cups. Get my half cup. Did you know that flour used to, when it sold all-purpose flour, was not sifted? And so that's why all your old recipes say sifted, sifted. But these flours that we buy these days in the stores, they're actually pre-sifted. So, that's why a lot of times you don't see that in the recipe anymore, because they are pre-sifted. So that's good, good for us, right? Okay, two teaspoons of sugar, because this is a sweet recipe, so we want our little crust to be just kind of sweet, just a hint of sweetness, so two teaspoons, and then one teaspoon of, no, excuse me, two teaspoons of salt, excuse me. This is a big old crust, though. It's going to go on a 9 by 13 sheet pan, so don't, don't panic Get that amount of salt. And like I said, if you're using salted butter, you might want to omit that. Um, I just don't know how much salt is in salted butter, you know, so... I don't know, guys. Okay, now, we're going to whisk this just like that just to get it all incorporated there so when we put our butter in there, it won't just clump and hold some right in one spot. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Have y'all ever done that? I have too. <laughs> and John got it in the cornbread, of course. All right. And now I've got me a pastry cutter. I've had this umpteen years. I bet y'all seen some around if you don't have one. And, oh, this butter is so cold, it's almost hard to cut it in here. But I'm going to continue to do this, guys, until this butter's in here, and it's like tiny little peas or tiny little dots all in here. 
and something else yes you can i hear you i hear you you can use a food processor to do this as well very quick one i just thought i'm just gonna go old school and especially because my food processor is up in the house and y'all are in my canning kitchen today sometimes some of y'all say amy i'm lost where are you today <laughs> and all i can tell you is join the club i stay lost but um of course i'm kidding with you i'm in the canning kitchen today and sometimes y'all are in my kitchen my house kitchen and john built me this canning kitchen his grandmother had one and i fell in love with it 27 years ago today today's mine and john's anniversary guys we're gonna go out of town again this weekend and celebrate it he and i maybe that's why i gotta get this pecan pie made for joshua because i'm gonna need him again <laughs> he's gonna have to come take care of these fur babies again but um anyway john built me this to can in and do extra cooking and I dearly love it. It's right out here where his grandmother's canning kitchen was, right by the garden. So it's just precious. It's precious to me. It's my little she shed, my little cooking she shed. And our little place we can escape to, right? All right, I've got that where it's just tiny little fine grains of that cold, cold butter. And now I need one half cup of whole buttermilk. And I say whole full fat because that's needed in that crust, okay? So I don't know how to be if you do a low fat buttermilk. One half cup. Going in here and I'm gonna use a fork. And I'm just gonna kinda Pour it slowly and move it around in here and bring this crust together. And I need all of that buttermilk. Yes, I do. Let me grab a spatula. Here we go. The buttermilk in this pie crust gives it a nice little tangy flavor. It's so good in contrast with that sweet. So try it if you've not ever tried the buttermilk you will you will be very pleased yes you will i promise okay guys and i'm going to bring this together and sometimes we just have to go for our god-given tools right our hands and get in there and bring that crust together that cold crust is still cold cold and that's good we want that butter to be cold in case you don't know so when it goes into the hot oven it actually forms steam that butter cooling down and it, that's what makes your crust rise and get flaky so you want that you want cold butter okay guys all right, I'm going to do me some plastic wrap because we're going to have to let our little pie has gotten tired. It needs a nap. It needs a one-hour nap in the refrigerator. <laughs> right? Silly little pie crust. So that's what we're going to do with it. My plastic wrap is not wide. I need a wide roll of plastic wrap, and that's up in my house. I tell you, I need to duplicate everything. Little old skinny plastic wrap. Who's got time for you? All right, let's see. You can use your plastic wrap to help bring your crust together, okay? Into it. A nice little disc like this. Then I'll kind of push down the middle. And it's going to go for its little refrigerator nap one hour, and I'm going to get cleaned up, and I'm going to get back here, and we'll put this pie together. Y'all, <laughs> my day went crazy that day that I put that little pie crust in the refrigerator. And you can let it stay in your refrigerator for two or three days and still use it, but then we went out of town. Y'all know we went to Jefferson, Texas, and I didn't put it in the freezer because you can do that and still use it. So, we're making another one. But... I love to look on the bright side of things, and guess what? 
I can show y'all a different way to incorporate your butter, your cold butter. Do you see this? This is a grater, like a cheese grater. And I'm grating it in there. And you see how it's going in little bitty pieces? So when you get this in there, it's like you have already cut your butter in there. So don't fret if you have no pastry cutter, okay? Or no food processor. Do not fret. I was looking to see if somebody's behind me. I think it was a vehicle, maybe. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show y'all. I said, well, that's okay, because I can show them a different way. I thought about doing that the other day. And um, so we're doing it today. And then I'm going to let this one take a nap in the refrigerator. And I'm getting back on if it hair lips Hitler himself. And we're going to finish this pecan pie because I owe it to our nephew, Joshua. He takes such good care of our puppy dogs while we're gone. So I will see y'all shortly, okay? Okay, guys, I've had it sitting out on the counter for about 20 minutes to warm back up <laughs> a little bit. So you put it in there cold for an hour, then 20 minutes back out here. Right? I know. So make sure you got plenty other stuff to do. We don't want to sit around just waiting on that, do we? And I'm going to lightly flour my surface, my white surface, just like that. I'm glad we're down in here because our timber guy just drove up to visit with John for a little while. And they've got the house all to themselves. I'm glad I've been cleaning on it for two days. <laughs> my house had gotten into... Does y'all's house ever get to where it's like, I don't care if anybody eats today or what happens, I've got to clean house. That's how I've been for the last two days. And I only got upstairs. I mean, downstairs. I've still got to go upstairs too, but it's not as bad as our downstairs, so... Anyway, I've been moving furniture and vacuuming and polishing furniture and vacuuming the couch and the floors and the baseboards. And I mean, I've just been a nut inside, but it just gotten terrible. And I, I can't tell you how many bags of garbage I threw away. I'm not even going to tell you. <laughs> I can't count that high. Sometimes I just get in those moods to just throw stuff out. Okay, guys, now i got to get this rolled out into this is my grandmother's rolling pin and i love that my mama's mama um makes me think of her i've seen her use that many times i'll use my cookie sheet i think this is about a uh nine by 13 or maybe a 15 by 10 but just a roll a jelly roll sheet or a cookie sheet or a baking sheet whatever just about that size because you're gonna need to roll this a little bigger than it and that's what i do i use this as my guide just a little bit bigger so we can crimp that crust and get it on there and we're going to bake it for a little bit. So I'll see y'all back when this gets a little bigger. Hey y'all. Okay, I have rolled it out like that and keep flipping it, making sure you have flour underneath because if you don't, you do like me and it starts sticking to the counter. <laughs> But yeah, I think we've got it the right size. So then I take my flour rolling pin and I start rolling it up on here like this. And if any of your crust breaks on you, it's no matter because we're about to put it. And if it sticks to the counter like it does on me, Take your little spatula and just help it along because we're about to put it over in that pan and we can repair anything. So no worries, okay? None at all. Let's see. There we go. We're just going to carefully roll it back out. It's a tender little old crust with that buttermilk in it and I love it. And that buttermilk gives it a nice little tang that kind of, um, balances your sweetness of your pecan pie. You will love it. You will, you will. Alright guys, y'all see I rolled it a little bit bigger than the pan so I can push it and make me some crust. And you can crimp it however you normally do and I'll show you what I do. I don't know if I, sometimes I'll use my fingers to crimp it like I'm doing a pie crust. And then sometimes I'll use a fork, so it just depends. 
all right y'all i'm gonna show you right here well on this side when you know it was way over the edge like that so i just tucked it back under itself like that so i have a little bit to play with and make this a crust and i've got me a meat fork and i'm just gonna go along and press it we're just gonna do real easy today and this looks nice and it tastes just as good as any other one so that's what we're doing this is going to be your easiest way. And if you don't want to home make your pie crust, you go right ahead and you buy some store-bought pie crust and just roll them together. I've done that time and time again, and they're good too. But I love this buttermilk flavor and this buttermilk crust. So I think a cream cheese crust like we made our pecan tassies with, I might have to link that video since I mentioned it, huh? That would make a real good crust. All right, into this, we need to blind bake. And all that means is we're gonna put some parchment paper in here. And get in there, parchment paper. We need to give our pie crust a little jump start because when we put that filling in there, we don't want our crust to stay unbaked and kind of gooey, you know what I'm talking about? And you can put pie weights. What I love to use is dried beans. And y'all see, I just keep them in this jar. It's perfect. And, you, I, and when you cool them back down, you put them right back in that jar, okay? You can use these over and over and over and for years and years and years. And just make sure you get those beans in the corners and against that crust. And what those are doing, these little pie weights are doing, they're keeping our pie from sliding back down into the pan, okay? And I'm going to bake this 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I'll see y'all back. <laughs> it's ready. 20 minutes I let it go. And now it needs to cool just a little bit while we mix everything up. Let's see, where is our jar? Get these off of here. And try not to burn myself with some hot beans, right? Okay, y'all totally let this cool before you put the lid on. Like, I'll let this sit till tomorrow or so, to be honest with you. All right, do you see what that blind baking did with our pie weights or our beans? It kept our crust from sliding back down on the edges of the pan. It made it stay up and ready for that filling. I'm gonna set this to the side. And something very important, you need to turn your oven down. We had it on 350 degrees to do this little pre-bake Fahrenheit. Now we need to turn it down to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Very important. We don't wanna cook our little pie too fast because this is a big one, isn't it? Um, that crust, stay, 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 stay. That crust recipe, is a double recipe of crust. If you want to make this and make it be two pies, I just make this because when I take a pecan pie anywhere, it's always more than six to eight people. It's some church gathering or family gathering and everybody wants a piece of that pie and it's gone. You know, only about six or eight people get it. So that feeds so many more. It's really almost like three pies. So um, that's why I love this little thing. All right, guys, let's get that filling going because I got my oven on 325 now. We're taking six eggs. Aren't these eggs beautiful? These are our girls outside. They donated these eggs, and yes, I did give them those shells back. I sure did, right outside the door out here. <laughs> They're always coming up when they hear me banging around in here. I'm beating my eggs a bit so they get just kind of foamy. But they, if they hear me in here, they come around because they're wondering what I'm going to throw them. All right, y'all. Okay. Next, we are going to need one and three quarters cup of packed brown sugar. And I use dark brown sugar, y'all know I do by now. Um, but you can use light if you want to. I just love dark brown sugar. I love the flavor of molasses. Get in there. To that, we're going to add 
one and one half cups of corn syrup. And I did not have any baking spray, you know, that non-stick spray to spray in here to keep it from sticking real bad. So I just rubbed some butter in there real quick. <laughs> Let's see, one and one half cups. See if I can see this right. One and one half cups. We've got it going. See if that butter worked as well. I need me a spatula anyway. Make sure I get all of that corn syrup. I make all kinds of pecan pies. I use some with dark brown corn syrup, some with uh, cane syrup. I just have so many pecan pie recipes and every one I make, John loves them all. Um, let's see, three quarters cup of melted butter. Y'all know I'm gonna spatula that out too. Precious stuff, huh? It sure is, I agree. To that, we're going to put in some flour, two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Then we're doing two teaspoons of salt. And remember, this is like a double or almost a triple recipe of a pie, of just a pecan pie. So that's why it's got two teaspoons of salt in it. But it just counteracts that sweet and balances it is what it does to me. And then we're going to need vanilla, and I don't have any liquid vanilla, vanilla extract down in here, but I have some vanilla bean paste, and it's uh, measurement for measurement. So, how much does it say? Two teaspoons. Yum. Yes. That was a generous teaspoon, wasn't it? Doesn't hurt a thing. No, it doesn't. And the only other thing I love to add to um, pecan pie, it's so sweet, and some zest of citrus will really calm it down. I just need about a teaspoon though, because if you put more than a teaspoon, you start tasting the citrus. One time I did a lemon and I put more, I think I put about two teaspoons, almost like a tablespoon, and it tasted like a lemon pecan, <laughs> which it wasn't bad, but it, it wasn't what I want. I just want it to enhance the flavor. Does that make sense to y'all? So not too much. And that's why I decided, I started using orange zest because it's a little sweeter and it lets you error on the side a little bit. You gotta get that perfect combination, don't you? See, that's about a teaspoon and that's all I wanna put in there. Not any more or half a teaspoon, seriously. And no juice, you make that be your snack for the day. Now, I'm gonna get all this stirred up and incorporate it. Have y'all ever made a peanut pie or a walnut pie? Yes, you can do that as well. You do not have to stick to just pecans. We will have to do that. As the as fall gets here, we're gonna have to do that. I'm making this, I usually don't make these till the fall pecan pies, but Joshua wanted one for taking care of our animals here on the farm while we were on vacation, so by George, he's getting one. I'm going to set my filling to the side just for a minute, and let's get this pie crust. It's cooled a little bit. Come here, buddy. We need you back, back on the set. Yes, we do. I can smell that buttermilk in here, and I tasted a little bit of the crust. Uh, before I baked it, and it's so good with the buttermilk. See, y'all do that. Okay, guys, six cups of pecan halves. And if you don't have pecan halves, you can use chopped pecans. I like how the pecan halves looks in it. You know, it makes a beautiful presentation, but it actually doesn't cut up as well, you know. So whatever, whichever kind you want, we're going to evenly spread these out. Josh is going to be so excited. He thinks he's getting... One pecan pie, and he's getting this whole slab. I bet his Uncle John's going to uh, talk him out of about one or two pieces. Maybe just a little corner piece. What y'all think? Y'all, when I used to make this slab pie, when I first started making it, I would literally place each and every one of my pecans. I did. I used to make some real pretty food, but I, I, I'm not doing that anymore. Um... I don't know. 
I don't know, I realized it just wasn't that important. Everybody would still like it, even if some of the pecans weren't turned exactly in the right direction. And I love how some of them are different colors. Some of them are darker than the other. It's just so pretty. Such a pretty, beautiful little nut of pecan. Yum, do y'all see this? Are you getting this? Right, I'm trying to do it where y'all can see. Doesn't that look good? Oh, it already smells like pecan pie to me coming out of this bowl. Yum. I noticed when we went on our little trip to Jefferson, I was recording and I've been editing some of that to share with y'all. And I noticed I say, pretty, pretty, pretty all the time. I'm like, Amy, you've got to stop that. You got to come up with some other, some other word, girl. This pan's still a little warm to grab, but I'm trying to get some of this filling everywhere evenly. All right, y'all. Now it's going to go into the oven. And one thing I want to talk to you about, you can cover it in the beginning. What I do is bake it for a while on 325. And then if my crust looks like it's good and done and my pecans look done, like toasted how I want them, then I will loosely cover it with some foil to finish baking, okay? And I'll let you know how long it bakes whenever I bring it out. I'll see y'all shortly. Isn't that beautiful? You want me to come show y'all up close? Can y'all see that? Isn't it gorgeous? I know. I don't know if y'all can see it or not because I can't see in the camera. I sure hope so. And I want to let you know it, it went in there 40 minutes exactly on 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And I never did have to pre cover it um, with foil or anything. It baked just like this. And it's just perfect. And I called Joshua. He just got off work. And his name is Joshua Isaac. Isn't that beautiful? That was uh, John's sister's son. And I think that's a beautiful name. But anyway, he's coming by to get it. And I'm going to see if I can talk him out of two little pieces for John and me for uh, dessert tonight. For supper, I am cooking. A lot of times I don't get on here with y'all because I've already cooked it with y'all. And I'm making the fried cube steaks with the white country gravy. And I'm making cornbread. I've done that with y'all before. I need to do that again because my cornbread video is real low volume. And so I need to do that again. And what else? My, oh, butter beans and cream potatoes. So, and I'm going to slice up. I've got two large tomatoes fresh and I'm going to slice those up for John and me to eat. And this for dessert. So we're going to be ready for bed after that, aren't we? <laughs> Do what now? I kind of cut these off and put them on my grave. I know. <laughs> I know. Tom Mac would have loved a piece of this. I know it, babe. He ate many pieces of uh, my pecan pie. He sure did. He got he got lots of them. Oh, yeah. I saw a deer cross the road. Two of them. Did you? On our road? Yes, ma'am. Under the fence. Over the road and under the other fence. <laughs> 
goodness, we've got a baby born in our back pasture back here behind the house that John and I have been watching. And uh, John says, they're tearing up my fence because they keep running through it. But I said, well, they can't, they can't help it. I was going to ask you something, Josh. Shoot, I was going to ask you. Did y'all have any, did y'all have a good day at the store, babe? Hmm. I probably just said what all I saw today. <laughs> Don't want to say what all you saw today? Josh always has some good stories to tell when he comes home from work. Oh, goodness. Okay, Josh, thank you so much, babe, for letting us have some. Let me cover this up for you. And I've got to run up to the house to get you some money for that meal. 